Sometimes in the night when you're feeling the cold, take a look at the sky above you. I don't know what the fuck that was. I've covered Postal, I've covered Postal 2, and then the dreaded Postal 3. Well, now it's time to talk about Postal 4 No Regerts. Funny enough, I was going to do this review a long while back, and this was when there was a lot of bullshit going on with it. Apparently, people were very critical, and someone that was associated with running with scissors threw a temper tantrum. But let's see if this game got the bugs worked out, at least most of them. Because let's be real, Postal 4 was very janky when it was first released, but then it had numerous updates and so on. I mean, yes, Postal 2 had a lot of janky moments, but, but that game ended up having a cult following. Back when it was first released, gaming media shit all over it. I myself love the fuck out of Postal 2. It's one of my favorite games. And that goes to say, even some of your favorite games can be a fucking mess. I mean, look at Carmageddon. The steering isn't the greatest. I love the fuck out of that game. Postal 4 No Regerts was developed and published by Running With Scissors and originally released on PC in 2019, and it was an early access title. But in April 2022 is when the game was out of early access and was released. Not only that, it did get a release to consoles such as the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 in 2023. Many have said the game had poor performance, poor gameplay, and dated humor, which funny enough, Postal 2 got the same shit back in the day. And then, of course, there was a lot of people offended because, oh my god, this game is very crude humor. Oh, I'm such a pussy-ass fucking bitch. Oh! Now, Postal 4 is set several years after the Postal 2 expansion, Paradise Lost. Postal Dude and his Pitbull Champ work their way to a fictional town of Edinson, Arizona. On their way, the dude's car with a camper is stolen, forcing him to take on several jobs to make ends meet in the town of Edinson. The end goal? Getting his vehicle back, but as you know from prior Postal games, things get fucking crazy. Very fucking crazy. Fuck you. There are missions that include being a prison guard, a sewer worker, animal catcher, working as a border smuggler, turf tagging, working for the mayor of Edinson, working for the local mafia, which features Vince Desi, the owner of Running With Scissors. Mike Jarrett, also known as Mike J, who works for Running With Scissors, is in the game. He is the bidet-loving mayor. You can go into many houses, buildings, businesses, find numerous weapons, and so on. Now, speaking of the weapons, let's talk about those. You get melee weapons like a shovel, taser baton, machete, mop, foam hammer, chain chainsaw, sledgehammer, then there's guns like a pistol, revolver, flare gun, ingram, and then weapons like a shotgun, AK, M16, squirt and spurt 9000, which is basically a flamethrower, rocket launcher, hunting rifle, throwable weapons like grenades, Molotov cocktails, and then there is a gas can where you can set fuckers on fire, spray paint so you can tag shit, and more. In one mission, you turn into a cat, which is fucking hilarious. There are many items you can pick up, for instance, there are ones that are based on the missions like a cardboard sign, light bulb, fire hose, a clipboard with a petition, which is a glance back at Postal 2 where you would have people sign a petition, crotchy dolls, cunny dolls, Larry dolls, and more. Then there are items like body armor, health items like fast food, health pipe, med kit, junk food, donuts, water bottles, a tin of catnip, a Kimbo power, vitamin X, just a lot of shit in this game. It's fucking ridiculous at times. There are different outfits you can wear, and you can even drive in this game, but it's a scooter. You can't drive any of the vehicles. And you know the scooters I'm talking about, like those fat fucks or those old fucks that Walmart drive around in. They will help you get around the map quicker, but let's be fucking real. You're going to get sidetracked and start checking out buildings, causing chaos, and just having a fucking good time. You know it, I know it, everyone who has played Postal 2 will do the same shit in Postal 4. Hell, I'm over 40 hours into this game. A lot of it, just messing around because it's funny. And a lot of the footage you're going to see here is just messing around because it's fucking funny. The graphics for Postal 4, I mean, it's pretty badass looking, although there is a lot of glitches and issues here. First of all, the world and environment is great. The aspect of going into numerous buildings, houses, and so on is awesome. There is a little bit of destructible environment ranging from blowing up vehicles, and speaking of the explosions, they look great. The game is very colorful. The blood and gore aspect with decapitations, limbs being shot off or cut off when you throw the machete is really well done. But then there are times that this game does slowdowns, and there are times that pedestrians walking around will just stop after you shoot them. And not just like, oh, I'm being shot at. It's just like they stop and that's it. They don't move. They don't do anything. 
Now, I thought maybe it was my gaming laptop, but a good portion of the issues I ran into, I feel are more so the game. But for what it is, there is a lot of good things about the graphics too. When it comes to the music, during the main menu and all of that shit, it's great. When you're driving the scooters, you'll hear some music and commercials and some funny shit and like a radio show. The sound effects from gunfire, screaming of people, explosions, fire burning, and just everything is great. Although some of it sounds like it's rehashed from Postal 2, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but you think they would throw some new sound effects in there, especially from some of the things pedestrians say, which we'll talk about voiceover work here shortly. But overall, I can't complain too much about it. Now let's get into the voice voiceover talk. Now, the original voiceover for Postal Dude in Postal 4 is John St. John. Yes, from Duke Nukem fame. But the Postal fans caused an internet riot for not having Rick Hunter involved, the guy who did the original Postal Dude voiceover. Thankfully, Running With Scissors did get Rick Hunter involved, although there was some controversy there, a little bit of drama. As I remember Mike J said during a podcast that they reached out to him, but he never got back, and it sounded like it would never happen. But Rick Hunter is in the game. Not only that, there is Corey Cruz, who did Postal Dude in Postal 3 and Zach Ward, who did Postal Dude in the movie, which was created by Ua Bull. If you know the YouTuber Civi11, he makes an appearance in this game. He is the crack dealer, I mean health pipe dealer, and he's also part of the radio caller section. Dave Oshry from New Blood Interactive did the voiceover as a cult member. Vince Desi plays Vince Desi. Mike Jarrett, or Mike J, is the mayor. Mike J loves his bidet. That rhymed. Fuck off. And there's a huge cast of people, and I think for the most part they did a killer job. Now, you're probably wondering if the game's difficult. I'm playing this on normal, and there was a handful of times I died. Usually it's my own fuck-ups. Other times I died, it was me just fucking being chased by the cops or getting shot at, whatever. But when I'm doing the missions, for the most part, they're pretty damn easy. Now, you can change the difficulty and the options. Now, let's talk about the controls. I use the WSAD keys to move around, space to jump, use the mouse to aim, and all that bullshit. For the most part, the controls handle really good, so I can't say anything bad about them. There's other things you can do as well, like going through items you picked up, to interact with shit. The moving around is very responsive. Same with shooting, aiming. Pretty fucking easy to understand. Postal 4, no regrets. It does have its issues. Is it better than Postal 3? By a fucking long shot. Is it better than Postal 2? No. Since the whole controversy and the drama, and of course out of early access, is it better? Yes, because like I said in the past, I wanted to do a review of this, but I just kind of put it on the back burner. I'm enjoying it. Could it be better? Yes. Is it complete dog shit? No. The graphics are nice. Yes, there are some issues with the glitching and shit. Once again, it could be my gaming laptop as it is outdated. I am running a 1060, but other than that, it ran pretty good. The music is fine. The sound effects are good. The voiceover work is awesome. The gameplay is fun. There's a lot you can do. The controls are responsive, and I feel that they're pretty damn good. Would I put this in my top 100 favorite games? Hell, I wouldn't put it in my top 500. If you want to pick up Postal 4 No Regrets for yourself, it's $39.99 on Steam. Personally, I don't think it's really worthy of 40 bucks. I got it during a Steam sale, and if I recall, I think I paid like 20 bucks, which is not too bad. I just think the game needs a little bit of a price drop. But then again, it was technically released in 2022, even though the game was in early access back in 2019. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning, I've talked about Postal, Postal 2, Postal 3, and I did a preview video of Postal Brain Damage, which is technically the latest game released in the series. Although there was a game released on April 1st of 2023 titled Postal Royale, which is like a battle royale type game. But Postal Brain Damaged, developed and published by Hyper Strange and published by Running With Scissors, I do own the game on Steam and at a later time I plan to do a review. That game is more so of an old school or should I say boomer shooter type of FPS and from the demo that I played of it, I fucking loved it. Hopefully at some point, maybe a couple more years down the line, another Postal game, maybe Postal 5 will be a thing. Obviously, Running With Scissors is still doing updates to Postal 4, and of course, there is the modding community and everything, even way back to Postal 2, which is pretty damn cool. But I hope we do get a Postal 5 at some point, and maybe they can take the mistakes they made with Postal 4 and fix that in a later sequel. I hope you enjoyed this review of Postal 4, no regrets. Thank you for watching. You motherfuckers, kick ass.